Good luck, high five, everybody. I am here on a Wednesday 5x5 five five video, and joining me today is Peter McPherson. He is the designer of a brand new game called Tiny Towns, which is being published by Alderac or AEG Games. Pete, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me a little bit about Tiny Towns, Pete. Uh, I've played it, but for uh, our viewers, uh, walk us through exactly what it is. Sure. So in Tiny Towns, each player is the mayor of their own 4x4 grid that they're going to turn into a town for small forest creatures. And you are creating seven different buildings in your town throughout the game. Each building is made by laying out specific resources in different shapes on your grid. And then when you have the right resources for a building, you remove the resource cubes and put the building down in any one of the spaces where the resources were. So as you work on many projects at once, your board gets really cozy. And then as you finish them, you have room to breathe again. Um, and you are taking turns being the master builder who chooses which of the five resources all players have to put on their board. So at the end of the game, everyone has built their town using the exact same resources. Each building scores and interacts in different ways, and whichever town is worth the most points at the end of the game wins. So that is Tiny Towns. Yeah, and uh, I had a chance to play this at PAX Unplugged, and you mentioned uh, that there are each player takes turns deciding what resource everybody's going to call, but there are other ways that you can gain resources as well, different rules for different ways of playing. Yes. Um, if you prefer roll and write style games, there's a mode called Town Hall Mode, where we have a deck of resource cards. So rather than one player choosing what resource everyone gets each round, um, you have a deck that dictates which resources you must take. So two cards are flipped from the deck, and then everyone gets to place the resource of their choice, and then two more cards are flipped. So most of the time, you're being forced to place whatever resource this deck this deck chooses and there's also a solo mode which uses the resource deck in a, a slightly different way okay and is that deck uh equally distributed is there an equal amount of a resource or is there one resource yep. that's more use than the other each resource shows up three times so it's 15 cards but you burn five cards in the town hall mode so you don't know which resource you don't know the exact distribution you can't card count sure sure so what mm -hmm. uh what inspired you to make tiny towns what was the uh when did you wake up one day and hit your head on the sink and is your flux capacitor <laughs> moment so there were a couple of different uh inspiration sources first of all it came to me when i had a really boring proofreading job <laughs> so i was at work one day and i remember sketching out the That's... building ideas and resource layouts and uh, went home that day and play tested it with my girlfriend and I uh, worked worked pretty okay at the start so okay, uh, start. two of the main inspirations two of the main uh, inspirations were uh, there's a word game that I play with my dad that you play on a five by five grid just drawn on a napkin or a scrap of paper um, and you take turns choosing a letter that both players have to put in their grid and you try to fill your grid with as many words as you can but since everyone's making different choices about letter placement you end up saying wildly different letters and frustrating each other um so i wanted to capture that that same uh shared you know building something with the same resources feeling and yeah. then also games like games like minecraft with the resource placement creating a number of different things when i first saw that in minecraft my mind was just blown and i wanted to see something similar in board game form yeah i think now that so. you mention it uh going back to remembering my playthrough it definitely has this sort of reverse boggle feel to it where you're dropping stuff around and then clearing it all away and making room mm -hmm. for more which feels really nice uh what's what's your favorite element of the of the design of tiny towns what are you most proud of Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I guess I would say the fact that everyone's dealing with the same thing, but that it's other players who are choosing the resources. Um, so it's everyone is dealing with the same situation, but since everyone's bored very quickly ends up at a different point, um, you're making different decisions at the same time. Um, and you can look at someone else's board and see, oh, I bet they're going to say yellow on their turn or something like that. And sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you're right. So I would say that's my favorite aspect. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, you and I uh, met at PAX Unplugged where we played a mm -hmm. game of this at uh, Alderac's big game night. And you've you've seen by now hundreds of random people, not only your friends and 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 loved ones play this game, but randos, just completely random people play it. Do you see a lot of like cutthroat, really like, I know you need blue, but I'm never going to give it to you even as much as I need it? Or is it is it more of a collaborative game experience that you've seen? Um, I would say it's, it's probably neither of those most of the time. Okay. I think most of the time, everyone's so stressed out about their own board that they're not really thinking about what everyone else has going on. It comes to their turn and they so desperately need that one resource to clear out a bunch of space. And so they say it. 
Um, but occasionally it does get more collaborative. I've even seen players negotiate, which it doesn't say you can't do in the rules. And I think is, is very interesting. So I'll say yellow, if you promise to say blue, um, stuff like that. And then I have seen cutthroat games, especially lower player counts where players are really studying each other's boards and saying, you know, well, it looks like you've already got four blue over there. How about another one? How about so one more? that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah. But for the uh, most part, it's a little more isolated and solo, I would say. Sure. Yeah, no, uh, I had a great time playing it. And I think one of my favorite parts about playing the game was that feeling of, you know, we played with six and or five or six. I can't remember exactly how many we played with, but there were uh, there was definitely a feeling of, will somebody please just say brown? I just somebody just say brown. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like it was the yellow no it's not what i asked for uh so like that kind of that the stress of feeling that like the the resources are sort of constrained not by you know what you can get off the board but just like what people need and what people are willing to say so mm-hmm. it was really fun tell me about being a first-time designer what was your uh what was your process like um so it's been wonderful Good. i am Definitely on the luckier end of the spectrum. My first game convention period was PAX Unplugged 2017. I was pitching Tiny Towns for the first time. I was treating it as a learning experience, and if something came of it, awesome. Um, so uh, that was just wild, and and pitching to AG went well, and I heard from them shortly afterward, uh, which was just a dream. So uh, working with them has been incredible. I was involved every step of the way through the whole process, and only in the past few months have I come to accept, hey, this is actually going to be a real game that, that I can hold in my hands and that other people play. So I saw the uh, the pre-production prototype for the first time at PAX Unplugged. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, so that was pretty cool. One year later to come back to the same convention, except this time I'm on the floor at a booth for my game. So it has been a dream. Wow, that's awesome. Sounds really cool. I uh I know that AEG is a is a strong house. They their War Chess game, which just came out, uh, was very well reviewed by us here at Good Luck High Five, and we love that game. And they have a lot of really great games, so you're definitely in really really good company. So congratulations there. Thank you. Uh, tell me about the artist for the game. I, one of the things I really loved a lot was uh, how sort of cute and adorable the art is, but also like very representational and awesome. So the art is by Gong Studios. Um, so it's a, it's a team of artists and, um, they've done a fantastic job just bringing the world to life. We didn't give them a a ton of direction about the, you know, the feeling of the vibe of it. And they, they took it and ran with it and made it so, so colorful and vibrant. And, um, I love the variety of different buildings and all the different creatures you see, because it's a world that's got, you know, it's got birds and chipmunks and mice and all of that. Um, I think they've done a fantastic job bringing that all together. Yeah, I completely agree. Having from what I've seen, it, it looks great. And Gong Studios, you know, they've done Kamisama with Colossal. They've done just a ton of yep. stuff. So they they definitely have another really good pedigree. So you're you're in very good company <laughs> as you mm-hmm. progress through your first game. Uh, so yep. what's next for you, Pete? What are you what are you working on uh, now that Tiny Towns is more or less done from your end, I guess? Well, uh, there's always more Tiny Towns to work on. I'm working on expansions. Nothing nothing official as of yet. Who knows what's going to happen? But um, I'm working on co-designing expansions with Josh Wood, who was the developer of Tiny Towns. Um, so he's the designer of Cat Lady, also published by AEG. So we have been uh, testing and bouncing ideas off of each other to see what we come up with, because I think there's more to explore in Tiny Towns. Um, And then I'm also working on two main other games. One of them is Pedal Pushers, which is uh, an engine building game where everyone is running their own flower shop and you are trying to sell bouquets and single stems and uh, figure out what the market is going to do. But everyone's engine is pollinating other players' engines. So you're sort of feeding into the other flower gardens. And then the other one is called Artistes, which is a party drawing game where you want to draw well, but not too well. So as the (laughs) artiste, uh, you seek to be misunderstood and you want to get, if possible, exactly one critic to figure out what your drawing represents or some, but not all players. Um, And then as the critic, you don't care about being right. You just care about understanding the understanding the now understanding what people are thinking about so you just want to write the most common answer whether or not it's correct so just a sort of wonky drawing game that results in some really inventive drawings rather than uh skillful artistic drawings sure well that's i mean 
my drawing style is evinced by my four-year-old influencing me is definitely <laughs> interesting rather than beautiful and artistic. So I'm looking <laughs> forward to that copy. Uh, cool, Pete. Well, we uh, we here at Good Luck High Five are big fans of the game. Looking forward to getting our own copy and so we can review it for you. And uh, thanks for your time. I certainly appreciate your, uh, your coming in and chatting with me. I really appreciate you having me on. This has been great. All right. Thanks much. And uh, you can look forward to our review on Good Luck High Five Board Games. And take care. Good Luck High Five.